The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 712. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is the co-founder of AAPI Women Lead and also the founder of Transformative Research, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Connie One. Dr. Connie, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Yes. Thank you, Sheena, for inviting me to be on your podcast. I am really excited to chat with you. A little bit about me is, like you mentioned, I am the co-founder of AAPI Women Lead. My sister is the other co-founder, and I am also the founder of Transformative Research. The first organization does a lot of work on lifting up and raising awareness around the issues impacting Asian and Pacific Islander self-identified women and girls. So we kind of go around the country and we find out what our communities' experiences, their needs, and who are our community's leaders and reminding them that they're leaders. And then we do some story collecting and then we end up with a conference based upon the research, the community-driven research that we've done. So that's what AAP Women Lead does. And then Transformative Research, that organization trains organizations, other organizations, how to do community-based research. So all of that is to say that I have a pretty decent background on community-driven research, community organizing. I've been a kind of quote-unquote national expert on issues impacting women and girls of color for about 20 plus years. I do a lot of work on kind of gender-based violence, a lot of work on prison abolition, a lot of work on mental and emotional health for our communities. And yeah, I think that that's enough in a nutshell. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I think that's great what you're doing. You know, it's definitely needed, especially as Asian women and women of color. I mean, it's it's something that we can definitely, you know, use and help us grow as a person. So thanks for sharing that. And Dr. Connie, what's your cultural background? So I was born in Oakland, California. My family is Vietnamese. I was raised Vietnamese. And my father is part Chinese. So in an, again, that's Vietnamese, Chinese. But I was raised culturally Vietnamese in Oakland, California. Thanks for sharing that. And what be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote? I think it would be from Cardi B, which is, knock me down nine times, I get back up ten. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And, you know, it's when it's confidence, it's how, that's how it is, right? We get knocked down so many times, but the most important thing is just getting back up and keep, keep on going, moving forward. And they'll build a strength and courage to, to have that confidence to, to go for whatever we want to do in life. So thanks for sharing that great quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? You know, self-confidence is really learned and it can be learned through our upbringing and then it can be learned through all of our experiences. Self-confidence to me is when you are able to own every single part of who you are and what you've experienced and then what you want to do with all of those experiences and all of that knowledge, right? So in essence, it's owning your power and then doing as you choose with all of that, that power. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And Dr. Connie, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? I would say that it was pretty tumultuous. You know, I grew up, my parents got here in 1975, and then I was born two years after, right? So that matters because we were the first generation of Vietnamese refugees and immigrants here in the U.S. And that also meant that there were very few role models And I spent a lot of my time navigating cultures, but but really trying to acclimate my family to a culture that they were unfamiliar with and one that was also quite antagonistic to us. And so it was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of confusion, a lot of trial and error. And I think retrospectively, it felt like I was trying to figure my life out and that of my family is on my own as like, you know, a four-year-old. And I also would have to say that I grew up in a pretty, you know, sadly, 
there was a uh, quite a bit of violence in my family and the idea of being confident as a young woman was ne- not necessarily instilled upon me right it was actually the opposite so if felt confusing, tumultuous, it felt contradictory to how I was being raised. And then I think slowly but surely through all of my experiences, I also ended up going to therapy. I also go- ended up, you know, I've been a, a yogi practitioner for 20 years. I now meditate. I also, you know, have a lot of healing practices that helps me to become as confident as I am today. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, it's really difficult when, you know, you move to a different country and nobody looks like you, especially at that time in the 70s, right? I mean, I migrated to Canada in like the late 80s and still, you know, Asian representation wasn't that wasn't around either, right? It was like you have you wish you look like a different person because you're totally different from what everyone else looks like around you. And like you mentioned, yet you're trying to assimilate your culture and, you know, the Western culture. And it's like you get confused. You don't know where to turn to. You forget who you are in the process. But what was that point in your life when you realized you can go out there and be who you are today, especially creating, you know, such a great organization like the AAPI Women Lead? What was that aha moment? I think the aha moment by which I learned that I could do whatever I wanted well, let's be honest, it kind of fluctuates, right? It, it fluctuates daily. But now that I'm a little bit older, I think my aha moment may have been when I sat down one day and literally took inventory of everything that I've been through and all of the jobs that I've had, formal and informal, and just did a skills assessment, just did like an assessment of all the gifts that I have and was like, the moment I did that, I was like, oh my God, I'm so gifted, right? <laughs> Whether it be by training or by intuition, by coercion and or just by, you know, innate, I don't know, gifts. But I, I took inventory and I said, these are all the great things that I have. These, these are also all the lessons that I've learned. That's going to have to be what fuels me for the rest of my life. Thanks for sharing that. And that's great. You're able to, you know, take inventory of that because, you know, we always tend to focus on the negative, not realizing like we are so blessed. We're so much more blessed than we realize. And if we can just sit down and list those things, like the gifts that we have, we've received the opportunities and the lessons, it really helps us to be who we are today. And because of that, what's your life been like now? So my life since I've realized my confidence has been a very grateful one. I think that I have learned because I'm confident I have learned that there will, challenges will always come. I've learned to be able to take on those challenges and know that I'll overcome them. That's one thing. The other thing is I have also learned because I'm confident that I have resources, meaning I have friends and family from across spectrums, whether it be professors, people who are hustling on streets, people who are my sister, I am very resourced. So I will always be okay, right? So those are the two things that my life has been like. And then the other thing is, I feel like my life, I just go back to the point about being grateful. I feel super grateful for so many things now that I'm confident. I can, you know, I find joy in like the smallest things. And that I think fuels my confidence as well. Yeah. So I think in a nutshell, grateful, courageous, and just ready for anything that comes up and resourced enough to handle it. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? I think the one tip I would give to the young woman who's listening is that she is going to be okay. Meaning that even if it doesn't feel okay, she will be okay. And the way to getting to okay and even better than okay is to, again, take inventory of all of the good things, actually all of the things that she's been through all of her gifts and talents, and remember that those are hers. That's her power. And then consider people around her as also gifts and resources. That will, all of that will make her okay, better okay, and exceptionally powerful, no matter what anybody attempts to say to her. Thanks for sharing that great tip. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your work, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? There are links and uh, profiles. What they can do is go to my website, which is www.connie1phd.com. That's www.connie1phd.com. 
phd.com. And then my, my Twitter handle is Connie1PhD. And my Instagram handle is SEE1C1. Those are the ways they can get in touch with me. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Dr. Connie, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Dr. Connie's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Dr. Connie today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Dr. Connie. Thank you for the invitation and thanks to everyone for listening. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com to check out cool resources, blog articles, show recaps, and so much more. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. 